Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Far Shore by Starling Games. This is a one to four player board game where you are going to be competing in Far Shore, which is just north of Everdell. Yes, this is an Everdell game, but it is a standalone game. And you are going to be, before the high tide rises, trying to score as many points as possible, claiming islands and gathering riches, all with your woodland friends, brought back once again for another adventure. At the end of the game, you'll check to see whoever has the most points, based on maps you've collected, how far you've sailed, and all the valuable critters and, of course, constructions that you have built along the way. Will you score the highest amount of points? Find out in the game Far Shore by Starling Games. To set up the game Far Shore, the first thing you will do is you'll take the main game board and place it out within reach of all players. Then, depending on the number of players playing the game, you will take these island tiles and place them down on the island spaces on the bottom of the game board. Two player game, two. Three player game, three. And four, four. Go ahead and then take out all the resources. There are four types. You have wood, seaweed, these gems, and these mushrooms, and place them all within reach next to these spaces that have their symbols on them. You'll have maps as well, and depending on the number of players you're playing with, you will add a two, a one, and a zero, um, and you will place them down from the highest point to lowest. So the two on top, then the one, then the zero. Additionally, you'll have these little circular tiles. There are A tiles, and there are B. Shuffle them up and set them aside in their own stacks with A on one side and B on the other. Then you'll put this tree together. The tree is going to house the deck and it's also going to house your meeples. Go ahead and place two on the bottom and one on the top of your meeple type, as well as one of your meeples in the boat that you're going to be putting on this board here next to the start sign. Then, finally, you're going to put in all of the extra resources on the table adjacent to the game board, such as your treasure tokens, any of the pieces you're not using, these seashells, which count as bonus points at the end of the game, and these anchors, which you're going to be utilizing three of on your own. Each player is additionally going to start with two meeples. I've got my two beavers, and Callie over here has her two puffins. If you're playing first player, you'll get five cards, the second six, and so on and so forth, as well as everybody's got these three anchors they can use throughout the game, but only once per game. Then, shuffle the deck, place it here, and you're ready to begin. Playing the game Far Shore is quite as simple as playing the game Everdell, and in fact, it's mostly the same game. You're gonna be starting with two workers, a number of cards in your hand, and these three anchors. And on your turn, if you're the starting player, you'll be taking one of your workers and placing it down on any of the worker spaces on the game board, or if you have any cards of those spaces, you can place them on there instead. Each of these spaces is gonna give you some type of resource, whether it be additional cards, algae, wood, mushrooms, or if you wanna use the island spaces, some variety therein. And when you place down your worker, you're going to gain those resources into a pool, which you can have as many resources as you'd like. The other option in your turn, as opposed to playing one of these guys, is you can buy and play a card. You can play a card from your hand or from the bay where these eight cards are going to start. You're going to take these cards from the top of the deck and place eight out in this bay. And whenever somebody takes one of these cards for any reason, you're going to fill it back up. So they're always going to be eight. The different types of cards are critters and these constructions. And you're going to pay for them by spending the cost on the middle left hand side. It might be three mushrooms. It might be two seaweed in the wood. It really just depends on each of the cards. The right hand side of the card is going to come with a victory point or points. And then the card itself is going to give you an ability. That could be to place your creature critter or um, you know type of creature on top of the card to gain a unique benefit when you place your worker down. It could be an instant immediate effect or it could be an effect that triggers along the game. So you're going to be able to gain more value as you go along. And some cards actually give you victory points at the end of the game. So that's pretty much the idea. Place one of your workers on your turn or buy a card and put it down on your field. Additionally, on your turn, there is a cool little bonus or benefit that you can do. If, for instance, you have a construction and it is on your field, as an action, instead of using your miniature or buying something, you can take an anchor and place it down on the location. That's going to let you set sail. You'll take any critter in your hand or from the bay and instantly place it down on your field for free which is really nice and works in combination with the specific construction. The only rule is that whatever type of construction it is that you place your anchor on is going to have to be the same exact critter. So for instance, if I've got this little sack type of a unique uh, icon on the card, I can only place a sack critter as well down onto the game board. 
and then you'll simply pass your turn. And each player is going to continue taking their actions. They're going to place a critter down, pay for the resources for a card, play a critter down, pay resources for a card, up until the point where they're no longer able to take any actions. When they can no longer take any actions, they're actually going to reset, and that will be their entire turn. They'll get back all their critters from the board, they'll take one critter from this tree, and put it down over here, and they're going to be able to rinse and repeat. Sometimes they're going to be able to draw extra cards depending on the phase. Uh, sometimes they're going to be able to access cards that give you a special bonus depending on the round. And then their next turn, they will have all their workers back in, a, in addition to another one, and they will continue. And the game will just go like that up until the point where everybody passes. In which case, one player or even two players might continue playing the game while another player might have passed a long time ago and score their points. Whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. And yeah, it's pretty much just like Everdell with some unique little twists and turns that I'll talk about in my review right now. Far Shore is a game that plays very similar to Everdell. There are a few differences though. The cards now are going to have specific unique abilities that will allow you to move your ship along this track around the game board. As you move your ship along the track, you're going to score points based on where it ends at the end of the game, as well as whenever you pass a treasure chest, you will gain the treasure chest as a reward. Treasure chests are going to be bonus resources, one of any type, or you can save them for victory points. Additionally, placing your character here in the dunes will allow you to take one of these maps. Maps have a requirement, so for instance, I could place my character on this area and I'm going to be able to gain this as long as I have three knapsack type characters or constructions, maybe one of each, uh, maybe two of a specific type, and basically they compound upon each other. So if I have two maps and both of them are worth two, I'm going to score two points for each map I have twice. So maps can kind of like cumulatively give you more points as you go along. Additionally, of course, there are the little islands, which are going to change up how you score and you're able to gain valuable resources along the way. Each of the cards, while functionally the same as Everdell, have unique new twists and turns as far as the different type of actions that you can take. And uh, there are no spaces in which somebody else can play their worker. Only you are going to be placing your worker on your own cards. And cards will allow you to obviously move your boat along. And there are other ways throughout the game. Another cool thing, speaking of other ways, are these A and B tiles. Whenever I play, let's say, a common critter that also has a paw print as their item or icon, I am going to be able to move my ship. If I only have a critter uh, or common, I will be able to move it once. And if I happen to have a common and a footprint, I'll move my ship twice. And when the last player from each of these phases ends, then you're going to take these, the top one of each stack, and put them on the bottom. And now you'll have constructions with a map, which will change how you choose to play certain things if you want to move your boat along the beautiful bay. Each of unique resources is different as well. Now you have this kind of driftwood, you have this seaweed, these agates, these like kind of minerals that are blue here, beautiful. And the mushrooms, the squishy little mushrooms, which are kind of like the squishy ones that you saw from the other game, all still the same beautiful components that you can come to expect from Everdell. All of the cardboard components are wonderful. The art is great. While it's no longer designed or, or, or um, the art is no longer done by Andrew Bosley, to my knowledge, it is still really, really, really pretty. And I could be wrong. Maybe Bosley is still, no, it's not, it's a different artist. Um, I love Bosley's art, but this is still in the same universe. It still feels very similar to the original Everdell, and the way you play the game is functionally the same as well. Uh, the only extra unique cool thing that I didn't really talk about too much, but I did in my how to play, is these wonderful little anchors. Now you don't need to spend resources when, when building constructions to place new critters down. You'll have three extra critters that you can play by utilizing the anchors. Once you place an anchor on a location, you can't use that location again for the anchor value, but if you have three locations and you can place each, lo each anchor a a on a location, you can place three new critters on your board, which gives you a variety of new critters you can place down for free, which is awesome. And of course, with the ability to have a certain number of cards in your field, up to I believe 15, there are some cards that will not count Told your, told your maximum amount of cards. Overall, the game is beautiful. It's simple, it's straightforward, and there's a lot to do. A lot of spaces that let you choose to gather what type of resources you want, discarding cards for more resources, drawing more cards and discarding cards, and spaces that can either be represented by just one meeple, and of course, you can't place on a space that only has one footprint, or spaces that have multiple footprints, where as many workers that you want to place on those can go there.
This is going to be a game that if you love Everdell and you want something with a new unique twist to it, you're going to really enjoy. This is standalone. It's not going to be a part of the Everdell universe. You will not need anything from Everdell to play Far Shore and it plays all on its own. But at the same side, right, this game is very similar. So if you have Everdell, maybe you have the entire collection, maybe it's something that's just not more, not unique enough to maybe want to make you jump onto the bandwagon. If what I've explained to you, the moving your ship and gathering treasure tokens, the ability to place these anchors down, the unique way in which it allows you to place new critters and constructions that let you move your boat, and the map system, if that's not enough to draw you in, then it's probably not for you. But if you love the artwork, if you love worker placements, if you love to place cards down and kind of create your own unique tableau with beautiful art and critters, from a unique new space in the Everdell universe, then this is going to work well for you. Everything, like I said, is high quality and it's so much fun. I love this game. It's gonna go right next to Everdell for me. And of course I'm going to keep it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Everdell Far Shore. If you're interested in picking it up, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and check out the game for yourself and decide if it's right for you. If you'd like, you can also go ahead and like, comment, and hit that subscribe button. If we have made you watch more than one of our videos, you've seen more than one of our videos, maybe we've earned your subscription, in which case you can push that button and perhaps the bell button as well. We have a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST and whatnot as well the same time. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. And as always, I look forward to visiting you in Far Shore next time.